In this video, we're going to look at the key components that make up SharePoint 2013. We'll start off with the farm. The farm is the highest level concept in SharePoint. It's a collection of all the servers that participate in delivering your SharePoint content. This includes your SQL servers, your web servers, and any application servers, and any additional servers such as SMTP servers that SharePoint needs to know about. Here we see Windows Server 2012, I'm looking at the server manager view and I'm showing you three servers in an example farm. My domain controller, I have my SQL server, I have my web front end. SharePoint uses SQL server for numerous types of database. In a SharePoint farm, you'll typically have precisely one configuration database for the whole farm, several content databases to store your pages and documents, and many databases for the various services that SharePoint provides. We're gonna take a look at some of the databases in SharePoint. I'm gonna tab over to my SQL Server. And on this machine, I have SQL Management Studio looking at my SQL Server. Here I have my config database, that's SharePoint underscore config. Notice how I also have, in this example, a couple of content databases and a variety of other databases for various services that SharePoint provides. To show this in SharePoint, I'm going to head over to my web front end where I have Central Admin running. Central Admin is, as many of you will be aware, the main administration portal for your SharePoint farm. One of the most useful pages when thinking of all the servers in your farm is under System Settings, Manage Servers in this farm. Here we'll see a list of the various servers that SharePoint knows about. Of course, here we see our web front end, W12-SP2013-A. As I scroll down here, you can see the various services that SharePoint has configured on it in this particular farm. If I scroll down further, we can see my SQL server, W2012-SQL, running the Microsoft SharePoint Foundation databases. The next level down under the farm is the web application. I'm going back to Central Admin and then Application Management. Here I can pick Manage Web Applications. This shows me a list of the web applications that make up SharePoint, including Central Admin. A web application is analogous to an IIS site. As with most things in SharePoint, it's a bit more complicated than that. For technical reasons, a web application could be hosted by between one and five IIS sites. We'll look at this in more detail in another video. The web application contains all the content of a website. For instance, HTTP intranet or HTTP www.contoso.com. Web applications can store this content across one or more content databases. Web applications also allow their content to be accessible via more than one URL or over different authentication or encryption mechanisms. The next level down is the site collection. I'm going to head back to Application Management and then under Site Collections, View All Site Collections. Site Collections contain securable content and there are boundary for security, permissions and group membership. Each web application usually has at least one site collection. Site Collections can contain a hierarchy of subsites. In this example, there's one at the root of our web application denoted by this slash. In this example, we have some other site collections, one at slash my, one at slash my slash personal slash SP admin, and one at site slash publishing. Notice how these are not subordinate to each other. They are all peers of each other, despite the URL giving the illusion that some of these exist underneath others. As administrators, we don't get to see the subsites contained within a site collection in Central Admin. For that, we have to visit the site itself. In my other browser window, I have my SharePoint team site that's the root web or root site of our site collection, which is mounted at the root of our web application. Sites contain the actual content of our websites and intranets. Sites can hold pages, lists, document libraries, documents, and of course, more subsites Sites can therefore said to be hierarchical. I'm going to head over to the Documents Library. 
and here you would see a list of the various documents available in this library. For fun, we're going to see a new feature in SharePoint 2013. I'm going to open up Windows Explorer, go to my own collection of documents. Here I have, as you can see, a sample document. If I want to put that into the library, I can simply drag it from desktop to document library, and that's now added. SharePoint is, of course, more than these four building blocks. It's also made up of servers, services, service applications, and much, much more. We'll take a look at these in a further video.